power to the right side. Really? It's the same thing. I'll strike out. Yeah, no line, it's not the same stuff. Yeah, we just started doing some like new drills. It just kind of helped me like my separation. I want to get my like nuts up a little bit better. I figured this out probably the last year of my career I figured I figured this out and I wish I'd have done it years before that because the ball really started to jump a lot better not because I had more power that way just my timing was so much better with it, right so you understand the leg kick is all about it's all about just creating more timing like you said getting that separation uh, which is just super important from a power standpoint the separation front foot to your hands, right? The one thing that I see, and I want you to think about this just right now. First off, I think it looks great. I mean, it looks natural. It looks like you should, probably should have been doing that for, for a long time. This is real smooth and good. Not a whole lot rocking back and forth, probably because you're strong from the waist down. Everything's balanced here. Your hands get a little jerky, right? So it's almost like a smooth boom boom. Right? When you want these to start at the same time, it's a, it's a smooth, right? If this is as smooth as this is. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, so down, so from the waist down, you're slow, and it's, it's, it's exactly what it should be. It's come up, balance, recognize the pitch, down soft, hands to the ball. You know, it's not a boom, boom. So that's perfect. But from up here, they're just not matching up every time. Up here it's a little smooth, then boom, boom, where you want to be down, boom, yeah, and then to get a little more verbal. Yeah, because I mean, I was always here just like, straight, straight to the ball, which yeah. was good, yeah. which I think plays. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're doing that. Um, and you can even do it, you know, the, the way I, because I hit like, I hit like you hit in, in college. I was similar but I was just a little bit more wide to where it was just a boom, boom. Like this really didn't do a whole lot. Um, you know, but from a power standpoint, like I said, I mean, what, what I do is I just watch video of these guys hitting tanks and I knew I was stronger than they were. You know, I'm like, well, how come I'm not driving the ball? You know, and it, it was just a timing and a rhythm thing. It wasn't a power or strength thing. I was just never, it was never perfect. It was good enough to get hits and it was good enough to get to the big leagues and good enough to play, but it wasn't as good as I could have been, you know. Unfortunately for me, I figured it out, you know, at the end of my career. But uh, so just try to smooth out this. So maybe even when you're doing these drills, maybe even it's a separate and then stop, smooth. Yeah, and then swing. Just so you can feel what your body's doing and what your hands are doing. Okay. And your hands really aren't moving at all. The thing is, is like, especially because I've started this a week before I went to Instructs, like, I can't feel anything that I'm doing with it. Like, this, I, I figured out when I turned my toe in, it allowed me to do this more because at first I was just doing this. So, like, I've done that. And so, like, once I get this, I can, obviously, at some point, because I'll know what the feeling is, but, like, I can't feel anything with my hands or anything like that. All right, so go back again. Ready? Go back. Let's do that. So first, you're gonna have to be able to balance right here uh -huh. and stay here. I right? stayed it on the. Then it's a separate. So. Right, so it's just that little. Move, right, it's like, it's like okay, you can relax. It's like when you take a rubber band, okay, and you stretch that rubber band, and you create tension on that rubber band, and I let it go, and it pops my hand. It hurts. Yeah. Right. But if I had that same rubber band, I only pulled one side of it and let it go, it wouldn't hurt as bad. All right. So in theory, this is all that's happening with your separation from your stances. You've got a rubber band here and here. And all you're trying to do is stretch it, 
right? You stretch and stretch and stretch, and at the second this, this thing hits, that's when you release the rubber band, or you fire your hands at the ball. Because there's a fine line between too much and not enough. You know, stretching that rubber band. If people want to know how power is created, that's how power is created. You know, so this is what I would do. If, I, if I'm you right now, this off season, your hands are comfortable here. This is where you always hit from. That's good. I put them right here, just for drill, for the drill's sake, uh -huh. and you can feel that. Oh, John Jay's a real good friend of mine, and I, I used to watch him in the cage. And he would start with his hands down here, and he would actually watch his hands do that. So your hitting coach now is cool with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think as long as you hit, they're not gonna say anything about it. And I really don't care how you get there. We're trying to put the fat part of this bat on the middle of this ball, okay? So you won't hear myself or Victor or anybody changing anything if you're doing that every single time. It was, that's how he drilled his, yeah, taught himself to get the hand with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just take them there, and it's just a drill. You're just feeling the hands go back. So if I'm stretching a rubber band, if there's a rubber band on my hands and my foot, and I pick it up and go back at the same time, am I stretching that rubber band? So how do I have to stretch that rubber band? I want your elbow. That's why. So I should stay until I get it. That's how you get that freaking gangster whip. That's what we're looking for. Yep, 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 yep. I just smooth it. It's going to feel weird, but just smooth it out. Nice and easy. down soft with that front foot. Up, stretch. That's it. And it's just to feel, feel yourself. Remember, I mean, there's about a thousand other things that I'm going to tell you as we're doing this, because this is new to you. And the reason I know is because I did it. I went through this progression and exactly what you're doing right now. One thing you're doing now, when you're going up, you're going. They are working on yeah, it's just working a sit. On me sitting. It's a boom. See, see, I played with the, I think, the best right handed leg kick guy of all time, Manny Ramirez. And I'd watch him go. And I mean, it was just Soriano, same thing. I saw Soriano. a video on YouTube where they draw the circle around his head. All the movement, but his head don't move. Don't move. It's crazy. Don't move. And that's the biggest fight with, with hitters. As we get through this thing, you'll hear me say it a thousand times. Keep your freaking head still. Man. Just keep it still. You know, and this sucks. This hurts. To be able to get here and go boom and balance and stay there, I mean, it hurts your hip, hurts your butt. You know, but if you can get there, once you get loaded and separated, and once you get here, now if you can keep that head as still as you can, you know, and then fire to it, now we got action. You know, so just try to keep that head from going up and down on your load. Who does this move the best in the big leagues right now, in my opinion, is Donaldson. He gets it up and gets stacked on that backside, and he's still athletic in his legs. And I mean, he is athletic, so it allows him to make adjustments when that foot gets down. <clears throat> but his first move there, when this comes up, is, is about as good as you can get it. My time. Different. I don't even know. Um, waiting longer, and then it kind yeah, of figured that out. I figured out one thing was I was starting late on a lot, and find out that earlier is better than later with the old sitting. And that's like I've been in my apartment just holding back, like trying to do that just to get that uh, feeling. Because like I said, I ain't used to that feeling at all. I was always tall and just 
Yeah, yeah. Just and you're still. I think you should still think that way. Uh -huh. You should still, in your mind, think you're approaching the ball that way. Because truthfully, that's what I like most about you. You didn't make outs up here. Yeah. You, know, you know who you are. This is not going to turn you into a 25, 30 home run guy. Nor should you even try to be that guy. This is just timing, rhythm. I'm going to hit a few more balls in the gap, maybe. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. know thyself. Right? Know why you're good. Let me ask you something. Why, why do we load? And this is kind of a... To get ready? To gather yourself? Question. It gets you ready, yeah. yeah. That's not why we do it. Yeah. That's just too strong a position? Yep. It allows you to hit the ball harder because yeah. you're ready. All right? What else? Alex, you can chime in too. A lot of hitters load. Timing mechanism. It's the most important move in the swing, okay? Why do we do it? It gives you more timing, correct? Gets you ready, gets you in a strong position to hit. Those are all the results of a good load, a proper load. That's not why we load. So your load is to recognize ball or strike, period, end of discussion. That's why we do this. We, and you just answered the question a minute ago. You said, I realized that it's better to do this earlier than later. Okay. And the reason why it's better for you to do this earlier than later is because now you're giving yourself 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. No. You're giving yourself three seconds to see his slider. If I waited to do this when Alex was right here, I'm screwed. Because now I'm rushing to get down. But more importantly, I'm rushing to see the ball. That's really, the end of the day, it's all about, can you recognize ball or strike? I don't really care how you attack it, but can you tell the difference between one here and one here? If you swing at strikes and good pitches, you're going to have success. If you chase, then you won't, period. We load early. Like The reason I'm telling you is because you just said it, and it makes perfect sense. I want you to understand this. You do this early. Because you're going, yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 boom. And it's slow. It's balanced. It's controlled, right? It's it's stack, 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 boom. Slow, 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 slow. There it is, right? Give yourself that extra. You know, dude's throwing 100. You're going to start soon. So you can see the ball and be on time. It's that same principle, same theory. Now, this is a variable in your swing that you've never had before. So, you're gonna have to be really good in understanding how that variable works, yeah. right? And, it's, and, and it is, you're right, it's a, it's a balance, slow. You gotta be able to sit right here and, and, and wait, you know, if you have to. Because if you see out of his hand, if you're looking here, 96, and then all of a sudden you go, you see this, and all of a sudden you see that. Or you notice a little hump in his breaking ball. And you're already here. you got to be able to ride it, ride it, ride it, then go. Yeah. You know, that's, that's hit it. That's what made Soriano so good and dangerous. He could sit right there. And dude, if you hung him a breaking ball, it was on Waveland Avenue. Because he could sit on that back side. He didn't fall forward. since I've grown up, I've, the hardest thing I've always had to do was try and stay back. I was always go get it, go get it. Like I always was on my front side. And that's the biggest thing I was, that I've been working on too is like trying to finish like this, like staying mm -hmm. in this position. And it helps, like 
there's some balls that I hit, and I'm like, I know I like I know I have the power in there. It's just the swing that I had at LSU wasn't meant for it, which it worked, which but I like I know there's more power in there and that's what I want to get. Yeah, and that's and, what and I need listen, to get. Dude, truthfully, that swing that you have now, you know, even the one you had at LSU, can get you to the big ones and can keep you there for a long time. You know, and so there's no, nothing wrong with trying to get you better. Yeah. Which is what you're trying to do. But the point I wanted to make with it, because I haven't looked at the video from the side yet, but I will later on. When you get here, what I'm thinking is you you're getting here real good. And they're only going about right there, probably. You can be on your front side all day long. If the hands stay back, you can still hit home. So if I if I told you I wanted you to elevate, if I told you I wanted you to elevate a ball, one of the ways to do it, or an easy way to do it, is just for you to catch it out front. Okay? Hit runs for trying to do the opposite. Alright, so the opposite of catching out front would be. So it's just as simple as just you know looking at the opposite. Like if I if I know I'm trying to go deep or try to catch, you know, I, I'm I'm taking my contact point, which would normally be here for me, boom, right there. And I'm just pushing it out here a little bit to try to catch it out front to elevate. So when I hit run, instead of your contact point being there, back it up. 